Good news, David Juracek is back in the NHL. Uh, the bad news is, I don't know if I trust Pascal Vincent saying that Juracek is going to get big minutes from here on out. We're going to talk about that on today's Locked on Blue Jackets. Your Locked on Blue Jackets, your daily podcast on the Columbus Blue Jackets, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Lockdown Blue Jackets, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I am, as always, your host, Jay Foster, here to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly about your favourite team and mine, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone for making this your first listen of the day every single day. Lockdown Blue Jackets is free and available on all podcast platforms, over on YouTube and on Sirius XM. And I also have to let you know that today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more, because right now new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. $200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of different things in this episode. We're going to talk about David Juracek, for example, who is back. Uh, the Blue Jackets seem to be getting healthier, and uh, Luca Pinelli and the Ottawa 67s especially had a big playoff night last night. So I... Uh, lots of things to talk about. I want to get... I do, I do want to start off with um, just some some... Not necessarily comments, but obviously the news came out earlier today about Boone Jenner and his wife and their son, unfortunately, uh, being born, stillborn. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of start off with with just sending my thoughts to them. And hopefully all of you guys are sending your thoughts as well. Really, really awful news. And uh, I don't think that the Jenners are going to be listening to this podcast, uh, even if they wanted to. Uh, but if they are just sending all of my good thoughts their way. Because uh, it's a really, really awful situation. So I just wanted to kind of start off by uh, by by putting that out there. Um, in terms of the Blue Jackets specifically, they seem to be getting a little bit healthier. Obviously, now we know that the reason that Boone Jenner was out of the lineup was because of this. Uh, I don't know if we'll see him again this season or like I, I don't think we'll see him anytime soon. Basically, um, I think he's going to be spending time with his with his wife and. That's extremely valid and understandable, and obviously we're not, I'm not advocating to rush Boone back for anything, um, but especially not this. I would be surprised if we saw him again, um, at least for the rest of this week, and maybe for the rest of the season. That being said, there are a couple of guys, obviously Justin Danforth made his return uh, in in the game against the Avalanche. Um, I thought he was perfectly acceptable for a guy that, again, has been out of the lineup for, for what, like a month at this point? Um, missed morning skate today, or not morning skate, missed practice today because he was uh, under the weather. Um, I guess it's it's that type of year. Um, but Sean Corrali continues to skate, continues to get closer. Uh, so I don't again, I don't think we'll see uh, Corrali in in the next game, which I believe is against the Islanders tomorrow night. Uh, but good good news for him that he is skating and getting closer. Um, great to have Danforth back. Be good to see if Chinikov. Is any closer to coming back? Uh, I don't think we see Adam Fantilli again this season. I just, I don't. Um, so, for better or worse, the Blue Jackets are getting a little bit healthier. Like I said, good to have Danforth back. Um, Alex Nylander obviously made his return uh, in the second game against the Penguins last weekend. Um, good to have him back. Had another great night against the Avalanche uh, because he's just, just wild. Every time I think about Alex Nylander, it feels like a like I'm being punked. It really does. Um, but... It looks like the Blue Jackets getting a little bit healthier, but it looks like for the most part, this is what the team is going to look like down the stretch here. Um, they've swapped David Juracek in for Jack Christensen. Uh, so I, I assume that Adam Boquist is not close because otherwise, why? Why? <laughs> you know, um, calling him up to sit him on the bench again, or sit him in the, in the press box even is just nonsensical. So I'm going to assume that Boquist is not close. Um, we'll talk about Eurocheck in uh, in a little bit here, but I just wanted to kind of take a look at the Blue Jackets who are kind of on the IR at the minute. Obviously, we had confirmation the other day Patrick Laine is not going to be returning um, this season, at least. And uh, I think I think that is everyone that is currently on IR. Be great to get Sean Crowley back, um, if only because then the Blue Jackets will have an extra body and they won't have to keep um, keep. Bringing people up from Cleveland, they can send some guys back down. Um, I think they only have four of them at the minute. Um, Tyler Engel went back, 
and Terrific Swalansky went back. So at the minute, they've got Gaunt, Maya, Pucha, Malatesta, um, oh, and, and now Juracek as well. So they've got five guys um, from, from the Monsters right now. So if the Blue Jackets can get even two of those guys back soon, then I, I think the Monsters playoff push slash hopes look much better. Um, in terms of the Monsters, I was going to, I wasn't going to cover them in the, like the playoff push check-in at the end, because I don't think that they're close to clinching. Um, they currently have a magic number of, of seven uh, right now. They're playing Rochester tonight, who are two points behind them in the North division. So I believe the the victory, whoever wins this game, I believe will, will, own second place in the North for at least a little, another little while here. So that's going to be a really interesting game to watch. But the Monsters sure could use having a couple of guys back. For example, Carson Meyer, who's been really, really great for them. Um, I think getting Jake Christensen will be back. It's it's a shame that it has to come at the expense of, of them losing David Juracek. Obviously, I'm very excited to have David Juracek back in the NHL. Um, but I think that's a loss for the Monsters. Again, as they go down this playoff push here, um, he'll be back for the... Um, the playoffs so like the blue jackets also like this is the thing is the blue jacket season finishes sooner than the monster season so i think the monsters have three games after the blue jackets finish their regular season um and so there's three games where they'll have all of these guys back and they can figure out what they need to do to have playoff success so um we'll see how that goes we'll keep monitoring that and uh see if they can get anyone else back before the end of the season. My hair is doing something weird. Sorry to everyone who's watching this on YouTube. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, you will notice I have a, a new uh, jersey in my background. Two new jerseys in my background, technically. Well, one's an old jersey. Um, I decided to swap out my uh, my All-Star jersey for my uh, Canon jersey because it is the best Blue Jackets jersey. And then I've got a new, a brand new uh, D-Side Dragons jersey in the background. So, uh, for, again, for those of you watching on YouTube, enjoy that um we're gonna take a quick break when we get back we're going to talk all about david juracek why i'm excited why i'm a little nervous and uh just everything about david juracek so that's coming up in just a second here on locked on blue jackets First, I'm going to tell you guys about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps you on ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle. Level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you are into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. They've got over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, so you're always going to find exactly what you're looking for. And the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every single time or your money back. For eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. They've got all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back to Locked On Blue Jackets, uh, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, we talked about everyone else in the lineup that's either healthy or is about to be healthy and now we're talking about the newest call up uh, and that's David Juracek uh who it was said today um let me just pull up the the exact tweet that Jeff Saboda um said because he is obviously the go-to for Blue Jackets news um CBJ coach Pascal Vincent said David Juracek should be with the Jackets the rest of the season a good chance to evaluate him after playing big minutes in Cleveland uh I agree. However, I don't know what kind of minutes he's going to be playing. Like, if I look at Jake Christensen as an example for the kind of minutes that, that David Juracek is going to be playing, he's going to be playing anywhere between 8 and 11 minutes a night, which, frankly, send him back down. Um, I believe that it's due, uh, it's mostly due to the emergency call-up rules in the NHL, which is that a player can only be called up for nine games and then be set, they have to be sent back down. Um, and, and then after that, I don't know how long they can be, they have to be in the, uh, in the NHL or in the AHL excuse, before they can be called back up. Um, I believe actually a player of being on an emergency recall can only can't be, re can't be recalled up on an emergency. Um, so they have, Emergency recall, they have to play. They can only play nine games and they have to go back. And then once they um, 
they could be recalled up on a standard recall contract, basically. So I believe Brandon Corns was recently changed to a standard recall as opposed to an emergency recall. He played as nine games and they were like, no, we want to keep him here. So they just changed that to a regular recall. He'll finish the season with the Blue Jackets because I believe he'd have to go through waivers now to, to go back down to the Monsters. And I don't think they want to risk losing their captain in Cleveland. So you're a check. Uh, sorry, Jake Christensen played his nine games emergency recall. And so they had the choice to either put him, uh, make it a regular recall, have him finish the season and then deal with that later or send him back down so they don't have to put him through waivers, call someone else up. They've obviously decided they're going to call your check up. Um, my assumption is that they're doing this because, again, I talked about this a little bit in the first segment, um, is Adam Boquist is, is not close to returning. Um or at least that's my hope. Anyway, because if they call, if they've called David Yurichek up, and again, they're just going to sit him as that seventh defenseman, like, genuinely, what is the point? I don't, I fully don't understand anything about that. Um, he's played 36 games for the Blue Jackets this season, uh, has nine points, including his first NHL goal in there, has 17 points in 26 games with the Monsters. Uh, this is a season after uh, 38 points in 55 games with the monsters. Um, so he's putting up points. He's putting up uh, like, this seems like an acceptable number of points to put up for a, a defenseman who uh, he turned 20 in November. Um, like, and he's a defenseman. He, he's not a super offensively minded defenseman. He can be, um, he's very active. He can be a two way guy, but he's not, you know, I'm not looking for David Juracek to be, you know, uh, a Quinn Hughes or an Eric Carlson, for example. Um, I expect him to be strong defensively and add in a little bit of offense. And so that's kind of the numbers are adding up there for me with Juracek. Like I said, if, if you're going to bring him up, then play him. If you're not going to play him, then I just, I don't, I don't understand what, I just don't get it. I truly do not understand why you're going to call him up. And then again, you're going to let me pull up how much ice time Jake Christensen has had since, uh, since he has returned to the NHL, because I suspect like he's been playing, like I said, I'm sure it's anywhere between eight minutes and 11 minutes, which is again, that's not the amount of, def of ice time that I want a young defenseman to get, especially if I still don't think Zach Wierenski is fully healthy. He's averaging 24 and a half minutes a game right now. Um, Jay Christensen is averaging 13 minutes and 13 seconds. David Juracek in the 36 games he's played so far has averaged 14, 47. Um, so he, Juracek is going to be slotting into that Jay Christensen spot. So probably playing with, um, Provorov or Gabranson. I didn't hate the, the Juracek Provorov pairing when it happened last time. And that means that you can put Jake Bean back with Gabranson. Um, and then uh, Wierenski Sieberson is, is fine. I have no real problems with, with uh, Sieberson uh, and Wierenski. So his last five games, he played 748 against uh, Colorado. This is Jake Christensen. 831 against Pittsburgh, 1041 against Pittsburgh. 15 and 29 against Arizona and 11 36 against Vegas. If you're if you're gonna play David Juracek for seven minutes and 48 seconds, I don't send him back down. I don't want him to be playing eight minutes in the NHL. I really truly don't. And it's not gonna help his development. I know that the, the logic there is well, if he's practicing with the big club and he's like, playing against NHL players, that is that not better than him being in the AHL? No, I'd way rather have him playing 20 to 22 minutes in the AHL than have him playing seven and a half minutes. In the, in the NHL. And unfortunately, I don't trust Pascal Vincent to not just play Wierenski and Severson uh, a billion minutes. Um, like I said, Wierenski has been averaging 24-28 this season. Severson's been averaging 21-09. Provorov at 22-07. Uh, the good news is Gabranson has been averaging way fewer minutes, but... Um, for, for for an example, Zach Wierenski, uh missed a game, or didn't he, he missed part of a game? I believe, or was was dinged up. There was was it the it was the Colorado game he got hurt or got quote unquote hurt in, and they weren't sure if he was going to be. Oh no, it was the the Detroit game he got hurt in. They weren't sure if he was going to play the next game. 
that was the the drama of Juracek flying to Colorado to not play and then flying back home after not even attempting to go to Vegas to, again, not play. Um, since then, Wierenski has played 22-45, 24-36, 24-22, 27-10, 27-24, and 24-56. Give Zach Wierenski literally three minutes less ice time and give it to s- literally anyone else because it's just... I still, I don't think he's 100%. I think he's playing well. I think he's he's playing like himself, but I don't feel like he's 100%. And it's kind of the same issue that we've had all season long with Boone Jenner is he plays too much. And Wierenski is a little bit hardier than, than Jenner. Um, but Boone Jenner gets played in all situations, gets played until his legs fall off. And I think three seasons in a row, he's had a season-ending injury in like March or February. Um, obviously, there's there's a different situation going on with Boone Jenner right now, so it feels weird to kind of compare those two, but Zach Wierenski plays too much, and every other defenseman plays too little, and it's it's extremely frustrating to me, uh, quite frankly. So that's that's how I feel about that. I, I would love to see David Juracek come up here and get top pairing minutes with Wierenski, and I'm not even asking him to play that 24 minutes that Wierenski does, but give him 18 to 20 minutes of, of ice time. Like, what do you have to lose at this point? Surely at this point, you want to stay where you are in the standings or lower, and I get that obviously players aren't wired to lose the same way that, like, front offices are, in the, you know, there's, there's all this talk about, well, the, the players tank they don't. They don't tank. The players are going to keep trying, um, which is why I think put Juracek in, put him in the top pairing, watch him go. You did this with Daniil Tarasov like three months ago. You decided that he should be the number one goalie. And so he played like basically every game for like two weeks. Why aren't we doing, why is it only Daniil Tarasov that gets thrown to the wolves of of development in, in the NHL? Like, why are we not putting David Juracek out there in all situations See what you've got. If it goes badly, okay, now you know what he has to work on over the summer. Like, that's kind of where I'm at with with the Eurocheck thing. So I'll be really interested to see, A, who he's playing with uh, in tomorrow's game against uh, the Islanders. And I'm going to be really, really interested to see how much ice time he actually gets, again, against the Islanders, who are kind of in that weird no-man's land right now of almost but not quite being a playoff team. They might actually have a playoff. They might be in a playoff spot. Um, right now, but they are clinging to it by the very, very skin of their teeth. So, um, wild card Islanders currently on the outside looking in. Uh, so they're going to be fighting for it, but this is probably the the best chance the Blue Jackets have to have like a winnable game for the rest of the season, unless you count the Flyers as a winnable game, which I don't necessarily. Um, but. That's that's my my two cents on on David Juracek. Hopefully, I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Uh, let's let's take a look at some 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 CPJ prospect playoff work because uh, Luca Pinelli is carrying this team on his dang back, and by his, this team, I mean the Ottawa 67s. Take a quick break. We'll talk about some prospect playoff uh, performances. There you go, alliteration. That's nice. Uh, we'll do that in just a second here on Locked on Blue Jackets. First, I have to tell you guys about FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel is going to let you bet on every single game of the NCAA tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers are going to get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all uh the the align i got knocked out so i my my basketball knowledge has gone down to zero but as i understand it uh people are pretty excited about nc state so maybe that's who you uh use your 200 bonus bets on or your 200 dollars of bonus bets on just visit fanduel.com slash locked on bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets Welcome back to Lockdown Blue Jackets. Let's talk about playoffs because uh, they are existing. Just because they're not existing for the Blue Jackets doesn't mean we can't talk about them. Uh, the WHL um, is the same old, same old. Moose Jaw is still up to nothing on the uh, Brandon Wheat Kings. The Ottawa 67s have played, I think, two games since we last talked. Uh, so they And they've won both of them. 
which is very exciting. Uh, they won. Um, hang on, I'm trying to, there's the playoff bracket. There it is. Uh, they're up 2 1 on the Brantford Bulldogs. Uh, they won game six. Uh, sorry, they won game two, six to three. They won game three, five to two. Uh, Luca Pinelli has goals in all three games so far for the Ottawa 67s. Uh, he had two goals against uh, the Bulldogs in game three, including the game winner, and also he scored the first goal for the 67. So he's up to four goals uh, in five, in three playoff games this season for the 67s. Um, in playoffs so far, he's up to five points. He's got four goals, one assist in three games. Uh, I don't know if that's like leading the team. I bet I could find that out. Um, he is currently leading the... He is, in fact, leading his team uh, with five points. Second place is Braden Kressler, who has three points, including uh, there are three goals, uh, which is, if you ask me, pretty dang good. He's also tied for third in league scoring uh, in the playoffs. Um, few, a few players have uh, six points. Uh, so the only players that have more than him, Philip Mayshart of Kitchener, Callum Ritchie of Oshawa, Owen Beck of Saginaw, Gavin Hayes of... Uh, Sault Ste. Marie, Dalen Wakeley of North Bay, and uh, Bryce McConnell Barker also of Sault Ste. Marie. So there are seven players, six players total in the entire OHL that have more po playoff points than Luca Pinelli right now, which is, again, really, really fun. Uh, and he is, I think, going to be one of those players where you look at him and you're like, man, how did he drop to the fourth round in like, what, in maybe three years' time? I think we're really going to look back and be like, man, how, how is, <laughs> that's the end of my, end of my thought. Uh, the Saginaw Spirit are still up in the series. They're three, nothing in the series against uh, the Owen Sound attack. Um, it doesn't look like Nolan, 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 Nolan Lalonde. Wow. That was, that was a real, <laughs> I promise I know how to say this kid's name. Nolan Lalonde has still not iced. Uh, he's been backing up in all three games, but I'm sure he's keeping ready. Uh, and then uh, Max McHugh scored a goal in uh, in the London Knights Flint Firebirds game, uh, the second game of the series. London is up three nothing, uh, and then he had an assist on Casper Holtonen's goal in uh, in game three. They won four to three in overtime, and the London Knights are up. Three, uh, three nothing in the series. Uh, in terms of the QMJHL, just to finish off here, because there's no, um, there's no NCAA updates because the Frozen Four doesn't start for another week or so. Uh, I believe the the Frozen Four starts this weekend, so we'll uh, we'll get to check in there um, for the playoffs for the QMJHL. Uh, Jordan Demay uh, is done with his suspension but they are but has not played because he is uh, he's reaggravated his lower body injury apparently um Halifax is down three nothing uh to the seventh seat excuse me to the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference the Acadia Bathurst Titan so uh it looks like Jordan Demay's uh, junior hockey career might be done it might be over and he might not get to see the ice in the uh in the playoffs the final guy that we're going to talk about is Tyler Peddle, whose team is also down 3 nothing in the series, but they are the eighth seed against the first seed, so this is a little bit more expected. Um, Tyler Peddle scored a power play goal in game two of the series, uh, and I believe didn't play in game three, uh, because I believe he's doing a, he's currently serving a two-game suspension for a unsportsmanlike conduct or abuse of official at the end of the uh the second game in the series so i don't believe he iced for game three the qmjhl site is not not working with me to load um to load this so he was not on the lineup he was not on the line in the lineup for uh, dogs in, in game three. So he'll be gone for game two and uh, sorry, he's gone for game three. He'll be gone for game four. And that could be the end again of his, of his season, uh, not junior hockey career, because I think he, this is his first year of eligibility because of, of how data dates of birth work, but 
the Blue Jackets could be down to just uh, just two leagues that they have prospects playing in because both it looks like both of the QMJHL prospects are going to be getting bounced in the first round. Disappointing for Halifax, uh, disappointing also for St. John, but probably a little bit more expected. So that's uh, that's all the playoff check-ins that I have for you. Uh, I don't believe, actually, one more. I'm going to just double-check. I don't believe uh, Oiva Keskinen and Tapera have started the second round yet. As far as I knew, they were waiting on another series to uh, to finish up. Uh, it looks like their first game is going to be on Friday, so we'll have more Oiva Keskinen and Liga updates for you uh, as of next week. But that's, uh, that's all I've got for today. Tomorrow, we're going to do a little preview episode. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about the uh, the Islanders and what they're doing and whether they should be in the playoffs or not. So uh, we'll talk about that tomorrow uh, here on Lockdown Blue Jackets. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day every single day. I, Jay Foster. You can find me on Twitter at underscore Jacob Foster, J-A-K-O-B-F-O-R-S-T-E-I. You can find the show at L-O underscore Blue Jackets. If you have comments, questions, criticisms, you can email me at LockdownBlueJackets at gmail.com. Until tomorrow oh thank you for uh you can find us on every podcast app of choice you can find us over on youtube you can find us on sirius xm and until tomorrow make sure you stay locked on